Jumelang and welcome to Bookshelf, a show that encourages reading and writing, a show that introduces you to the amazing writers here in South Africa. My name is Gail Motoho. Now, South Africa is one of the countries countries with a very high rate of divorce and research shows that more than 81 plus K completed divorce forms processed in 2021 alone indicating an increase of 31% from the 16k plus divorces processed in 2020. Now today we are joined by an author who has written a book that shares principles on how to you know encourage and grow your marriage to be a success that you want it to be. These are principles that you want to learn. Now get your notepad and your pen ready because we're gonna do this. Help me welcome Lisa. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm How good, thank you. You know, I didn't pronounce your surname because I didn't pronounce your surname. Okay, because I was going to say it very wrong, so I wanted to. Okay, okay um, Mr. Lishonolo, before we get into many other things, please introduce yourself. Tell us about who and you know um where are you from and what are you all about yeah the first name is Lishonolo. the surname is mazindo uh Kimusutu, even though the surname does not suggest that actually yeah. a home affairs era okay <laughs> so it's a story for another day i'm from free state Belkomo, uh machado um, I'm a registered counselor by profession, registered with Health Professions Council of South Africa. I'm a marriage therapist, relationship counselor, and mental health practitioner since 2006. Now it's 17 years. Seen a number of people in the therapy room and spoken to the number of people in seminars and in the media space as well about marriage and mental health. So that's what I do. I also teach psychology as well in one of the institutions in South Africa. Wow, and which institution is that? It's the um, South African College of Applied Psychology. Wow, you know, I was uh, I went through your book and um, I could see the passion. Uh, about marriage and, and and particularly families you know because you know you can be married but you know what makes a marriage to be what it is it's how the family is structured how things happen you know a, a lot of people can tell you now i come from a very broken home because of what you do what you do so please tell us this passion what what inspired uh, you to be so much um, um invested in, in family marriage well it started with a void a void that i share with many of the south african people growing up in a dysfunctional and ultimately broken family so i have i am the victim of being raised away from my father okay. um, because my father and mother separated when i was about four years old so that created a void that uh, propelled me to want to see marriages succeed so that children don't experience what I experienced when I was a child. And my first job in 2006, I worked for FAMSA, Family South Africa. Back then they called it Family and Marriage so so Society of South Africa. So I was a counselor there. I think that's where I started uh, focusing on marriage programs because I was a counselor, I was a trainer, I was also a community developer. But because it's FAMSA, most of the cases that we handled when marriage cases. So in those, uh, when you were handling those marriage cases, and I believe you find that kids are involved, uh, what was your main concern, especially because you've been through, you've experienced that, what was your main concern and what was, um, you know, uh, the thing that you could like, just your mom, if there's anything, I will help this couple to overcome whatever challenge they are going through now. Yeah, because uh, every society starts in a family environment. Mm. So if we don't have a strong family, we have broken communities. True. And we, we have nations that um, cannot cope, cannot mm. survive, cannot be productive for their countries. So I've learned that um, marriage is where people are made, uh, is where people are socialized into the community. 
It's where they are taught how to interact with other people, how to be productive, how to give and receive love. Yes. And that's where they get role models from their parents in terms of how to love the, the person of the opposite sex and receive love from them. So it's, it, to me, marriage is very important because it's the foundation of every society. Sure. So as a counselor, because you say, you know, you have a very a broad background of, you know, Gatli Halo counselor, and you've sat with different people, probably some individual individuals and some as couples, and you know, you've sat with families. What is the most common thing that you you picked up or you pick up every time you sit with them? And for you it's one of the things that drives you and propels you, like you say, to continue this journey. Yeah, I've noticed over the past 17 years that most marriages end long before they start. Yeah. People come with marriage problems which are not necessarily marriage problems. They are actually childhood traumas. Sure. And sure. They, they, people went through a lot as children and uh, they, they, the wound doesn't heal and the child who was wounded in their early childhood starts to control the adult that they are and they are trying to build their marriages but the child controls that adult and people project the anger their anger to their partners and their partners were not there when they were broken um why do i say marriages end long before they start actually they end when our parents think we are too young to understand uh, when they shout at each other at the background when we are asleep so when you are sleeping it, that's that's where you are most vulnerable because if you hear the noise you can't evaluate the noise you can't um, you can't figure out what to allow into your mind so that noise and that violence goes straight into your unconscious mind mm -hmm. and according to psychology um, if I could provide a figure about 90% of our behavior is controlled by our unconscious mind mm -hmm. so people don't know why they do the things that they are doing no. and the, the reasons are planted in the early childhood for example um, I, I had I had a client um, who felt a very very deep sense of abandonment. Her, her mother, when he was about four, um, he left her with the grandmother, but he didn't talk. He, she left him with the grandmother, but she didn't prepare him for that. She didn't tell him that I'm going to leave you for six months with the grandmother. So she left him. She left him there at her daughter Amat, and the boy let, saw him in the win, uh, in the window. And that boy grew up thinking, Oh my goodness, I'm not worthy to be loved. Yes, I am she... not lovable. My own mother doesn't love me. That's why she ran away from me. So she, he, he grew up with a sense of abandonment and a sense of rejection. So when he grows up now in his relationships, that child now is Come using up. the adult body to put him in control. The attitude now becomes, I was abandoned and it was painful, but I'm not going to allow anyone to abandon me. I'm going to abandon them before they abandon me. I'm going to reject them before they reject me. Before you know it, you are in your third marriage and you are initiating the fourth divorce. Because Not because the marriage is not going well, but because you are expecting that your wife or your husband will leave you the way your mother left you with your grandmother. Sure. Because I want us to unpack it from that, or how it affects you in that manner. Let's take a short break and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to Bookshelf, and if you've just joined us, Mzekiluzi Monalim Tadele Nolo, who's the author of the book title, Together Till the End. Mzekiluzi Monalim, before the break, you know, you were explaining, you know, into the effect of motto until it's all over the world, you had seen it. And then before, exactly before the break, we were still unpacking how, you know, sometimes uh, what happened, how you look at it that it comes out, it roars, I would say. And now you don't know how to handle all of that. Please, you know, please unpack all that. Yeah, um, a few years ago, very recently, I had a client who was struggling to 
to, to get it, to have an erection. Actually, he would get an erection, but he would lose it as soon as he has it. Mm. And and he came to me for counseling with the wife because they he has never they have never enjoyed their sexual experience as a couple because he couldn't get an erection and sustain it. And then usually when a person has a problem uh, of, of, of that nature, we look at the medical reasons why it could be the case. Maybe it could be an illness or it could be the side effect to a treatment. And then, and but he has he had already tried all of them and been to the doctors and tried all the supplements that could help him, but he still lost his erection. So if that be the case, there's nothing in the medical uh, field that explains the behavior or that manages to solve the behavior, then we look at it psychologically. So I had to interview him about the first five years of his life and his relationship, particularly with his parents. It was um, where he revealed that he was raised by a single mother, the father was not there, and then he struggled to remember, but uh, through some techniques that we are using in the, in the psychology profession, in the practice, I managed to help him recall what happened when he was about two. So he would, he would wake up with, every time he woke up, he woke up with an erection. And when the mother saw that she was uncomfortable, she thought the boy would be a rapist because uh, most women think a man needs a reason to have an erection. You know, an erection is something that happens when it wants to, even when the fly passes, it happens. Actually, boys start having their erection in the womb, but the, the, lady, the mother didn't understand that it, does, it, it had nothing to do with what he was thinking or what he was intending. But because he didn't, she didn't understand it and the father was not there to explain, every time this boy had an erection, the mother punished him. Like she would punish him you are going to be a rapist. Mm. And now he grew up associating an erection with punishment. Sure. So now um, there's, there's, there's a philosophy or theory in psychology that explains how we think um, or we look for our mothers in our wives. Sometimes mm. when our relationship with our wives represents uh, our relationship with our mothers. So when he saw his wife, the wife represented the mother in her mind. So he, she, the, in his mind, because he was when he when he was two, every time he has an erection with the wife, the two-year-old reacts, is afraid that she, they are, she, he's going to be punished, and that's how he lost his erection. He, it was fear of punishment that started when the mother thought he was too young to understand. So I had to help him deal with that fear and how it started and help him dissociate his, his wife from the mother and the childhood experience from the adulthood. And through psychotherapy, after a couple of weeks, it was a couple of weeks, yes, then he managed to regain his erection and then he began to function uh, um, uh, well, properly mm -hmm. um, in bed because now we have dealt with the trauma that happened in childhood when he was punished for something that was so natural and that he would need when he got married. Sure, it's amazing how childhood trauma, even the one we are not aware of, because you think it's not trauma until you go into your adulthood and you realize that I have anger issues or I have uh, issues uh, of this, I have you know self low self-esteem and all that and only to revisit then you realize because a lot of people are struggling with um, the little child in them that they never really dealt with. So you're like wow, I'm learning. I'm, 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 I'm learning and I believe our viewers are also learning. In your book, you also touch base on um, you encourage couples not to give up um, on their marriages, you know, because I mean, marriage is an institution. I believe, you know, and you know, um, with the high rate of divorce happening in our country, um, how do you then, you know, um, uh, stay in a marriage oh, no, this is toxic I, I, I tried I've tried I've tried to fight I've tried to do this for this marriage I've tried all sorts of things but even Lady Cancel you know about too long they go through cancer means but still it doesn't help so the only option is to get out of it but in your book now you say okay encourage them or make it work 
Yeah, certainly. It's it's very important that you do the best that you can. Mm. Um, because if you have not done the best that you could yeah. and you divorce, you are always going to think you could have done better. Yeah. You are going to be followed by regrets. Yeah. But if you think there's nothing more you could do yes. and you are convinced that there's nothing more you could do, then you will not have any regrets going forward. Mm. I, in as much as I encourage people to make sure that they become patient and they fight for their marriages, I don't encourage people to to, to be in love at their expense. Mm. I, I don't encourage people to die together. I mean, especially if you have children, because there are marriages where you know that this person is going to kill you, especially abusive marriages. Um, I call them marriage killers. There are marriage problems, there are marriage killers. There's a chapter in the book where I talk about 10 marriage killers. Domestic violence and abuse is one of the marriage killers. Cheating is one of the marriage killers, actually. It's not a marriage problem, it's a marriage killer. Because when you get into bed with someone who is not your spouse, you are basically nullifying your covenant with your spouse. That's true. And then and then problems can be solved, but yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to resuscitate what is dead yeah. and bring it back to life. Yeah. In as much as marriages do recover from cheating and infidelity, lo a, lot of, a lot of things die in those marriages, yes. even though the marriages have not recovered. So there are things that will kill your marriage. Uh, just as much as there are things that will kill you, it's, it's important to stay alive, but accidents do happen and people yeah. die that that being said I'm, i want to say to people who have gone through divorce don't be too hard on yourself you don't marry yourself you marry the other person and even if it was yourself you married it there are times when you cannot stand yourself so, how yeah. much more about the other adults that you are sharing the space with if both of you are committed to the marriage the same way and you are willing to work through the childhood traumas and all the pain and the hurt and the anger because anger usually is a protective emotion it protects you from the vulnerability that that and it's it's safer to be angry than vulnerable okay now on that note your yeah, anger you are like a unpacker and also read something from your book an abstract from your book that i believe is going to help someone and enlighten someone about this journey but before that let's take a short break and we'll be back Welcome back to Bookshelf. I'm who is the author of a book titled Together Till the End. This is our last uh, segment where um, we're going to read a certain portion in your book and unpack a little on it. Um, because, hey, yeah, no, Linyalo. Can we read that? <laughs> Can we read that before? <laughs> Um, I decided not to read from a specific chapter, but to read an, ex an, 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 an extract from the preface, um, which is page number Roman figure nine, the very first paragraph. It says, the world today is harshly confronted by the rapidly increasing social problems, crime, prostitution, rape, teenage pregnancy, dropping out of school, homelessness, suicide, juvenile delinquency, alcohol and drug addiction, wickedness, violence, peer pressure, sexually transmitted infections, degenerate, moral degeneration, gangsterism, hatred, sexual promiscuity. All this and more can be traced back to dysfunctional families and broken marriages. If marriages are not healthy, families will be dysfunctional and the whole community will suffer. The government spent billions of dollars trying to fix the problem facing their nations and still there is no solution because they address the symptoms and leave the core of the problem unattended. If they could, if they could spend more money and resources on strengthening marriages, they would reduce many social problems tremendously. It takes less money and resources to build strong marriages than it does to deal with the consequences of a broken marriage. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so, so, what can be done? You know, you, you've highlighted um, 
the brokenness of a lot of families out there and between virtual reality teachers that's what then obviously it affects the kids and kids who come from broken homes you'd find that bah, they get involved in gangsterism a lot of things happen and then even judge these young people not knowing or and there is something it's affecting them to behave the way they are behaving yeah certainly um that the, the primary reason is because we are broken people because we come from broken homes in some families our parents did the best they could to make sure that we have the life that we need but ignorantly they did things that traumatized us without knowing and then people now are all these things that i mentioned the addictions and the the gangsterism it's just the distractions that we try to use yeah. to numb the pain or to distract ourselves from the pain that we cannot understand because all of us have the pain that we cannot understand but in order for us to process it we turn it into the pain that we can understand like piercing myself or getting stabbed with a knife is better than living with this pain that I cannot explain that started right in the family so how do you what can you um, you know do or the advice you can give to parents who banka laiti tswago ke re lona ka pila bana re jwe tsena mantsu a se shapo ka pila bana even le bana the way a ke re batswa di ba kwa di o tlhole gore because of how the marriage is even the way they respond to kids o tlhole you know what me le pela o bua something go is a lifestyle ya ka ke go jwe tsena pela you know and it starts there o batswa di what is the encouragement you know or you know the lesson you can you know, give to to such parents yeah it's it's living beyond ourselves knowing that our actions do not affect both of us it's not only about expressing mm-hmm. how i feel and the way i feel it to my spouse mm-hmm. it's about the things that i model to my children the things that i expose my children to because it doesn't it, it takes a lot to heal an adult but it takes a little to traumatize a child now because it is not the things that we do it's the things that we don't do if wana allah at le 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 tletse o sa mo change that traumatizes the child it says to the child i cannot trust anyone in this world not even my spouse then they grow up with trust issues and insecurities and they grow up thinking nobody loves them because when he was 11 months old and he was crying for milk nobody attended to them so we gata ho bo utlisa bana ka setsa and we represent our arms but the only love that children respond to is our arms if ka ba fal setsa we teach them to use to that the only way to deal with the pain is to put something in your mouth and then we wonder why they can't stop drinking and smoking oh yeah that's my game that is so no obhlal you are smart yo this is deep okay so my question i read in your book or you know you say that marriage uh, have a social impact you know uh, but home and then um how is that so because you know i know that we are social as part to you and all that how does it have a social impact gabo yeah i once came across children play omo ngine le ntatu wa hai omo ngile ntatu wa hai me was lying on her bed facing up and the, the father which is a four year old boy was lying on top of him okay. and they were making noises they didn't understand what they were doing but they were trying to imitate their mother and father making love mm. and then they are playing it that out in the community the fact that it was so to is the first language that i had at home mm. everything that we first experienced mm. at home it affect us in the society like when you raise a child remember that you are preparing a citizen for a society you are either preparing a prisoner or a president so make sure that you raise the children well and don't take out your pain and anger yaba tsodi ba how on your children rather go and seek help so that you don't um we i call it transgenerational uh, trauma or socially transmitted toxicity where we transmit our toxicity to our children bearing killing from our parents it has to stop with you one way or the other for the sake of your children and for the sake of our communities sure no i wish we had 
enough time to unpack this because there's a lot to learn but uh, that's why the book is there so get yourself a copy so that you can learn more thank you so much um before how can we get a hold of uh, the book and of course how can we get a hold of you if you want to you know there are people who say how can we get a hold of you yeah the book is in amazon kindle many other um, uh, websites that are there but it's, it comes with a different cover so if you want the book that with this cover me and my beautiful wife here you can just contact me through my website you can see them by numbers there you can get information about me and about the books and the numbers that you can use to order your copy if you are anywhere in the country we can courier the book to you and um my number the number that i use is 060-993-6765 if you need counseling or you need um to have me speak at your event um with be it a marriage seminar or any other event that speaks about mental health and relationships you can get me on facebook the shonolo mazindo instagram the shonolo mazindo youtube um i have a channel with my wife called the mess together till the end yeah that is um the platform stable and available for so. wow no that is on no keep up the great work and may god continue to just elevate you and use you to make that impact thank you kelebo a holo khedi ya and thanks for having me it's a pleasure eh le kutwetse i hope you were taking notes and i hope that you will be encouraged to really get this book for yourself because it touches not only on marriage but on a lot of things even from childhood to adulthood so that you can be able to understand some of the things that you've been through as an individual until we meet again next week remember if you can see the invisible you can do the impossible i am gail mutlong and i'm signing out bye